You may not even know you're ovulating, but there are some telltale signs. Ladies, it's healthy to get your period. It's healthy to get your period, but it's even better when you are aware of what's going on in your body because no one else can tell you what's going on in your body except for yourself, right? So take it away, doctor. <laughs> tell us more about the wonderful world of ovulation. Mm -hmm. Okay, hi guys and good afternoon. This is Rita Mavunda and we are here today in our ladies lounge, our safe space for ladies to learn all things femininity, female, womanhood, and empowerment. So today I am joined by a good friend, Michelle Donald, Dr. Donald, if you're nasty, sorry, Janet Jackson reference. And <laughs> so we are here today to talk about uh, menstruation, ovulation, and all of those things that we as women experience, but has been shrouded in all types of secrecy. We don't really have the best information, we don't know. So this is a really safe space for you guys to be able to get the information that you need, ask questions in the comments, let us know, but we are here for you. And I'm gonna let Dr. Donald take it away. Take it away. Thank you, Rita. Hi everyone, how are you? I am Dr. Donald. I'm a pediatrician and a preventive medicine doc. I'm here to talk about one of my favorite topics, the menstrual cycle, AKA ant flow, AKA your period, AKA the mighty mankind maker. So um, just to level set and make, make sure we're all on the same page, I just wanna go over some of the terms that I'll be discussing. So we have a nice diagram for you here today. I'm gonna to be playing the teacher's aid for today. So first, we wanna point out this is your entire reproductive system. It is made up of your ovaries, your fallopian tube, your uterus, your cervix, and then the out pouching is your vagina. So those are the terms that I'll be using to discuss your menstrual cycle. Um, we'll keep the diagram here. Sometimes it'll go away, sometimes it'll come in. You know, we'll keep you guessing. Um, and I just wanted to familiarize you with the terms. Okay, so your menstrual cycle is 28 days on average. Some women have their menstrual cycle on the shorter side, which is 21 days, or the longer side, which is 35 days. However, regardless, your menstrual cycle starts the first day of your period. So the first day you start to notice any brown, any red, that is day one of your menstrual cycle. So when we are starting talking about a 28 day menstrual cycle, we are starting with day one and we're ending with the first day of your period or the last day of um, no bleeding. So the menstrual cycle has four phases. There's the menstrual phase, there's the follicular phase, there's the ovulation phase, and then there's the luteal phase. Okay, so the menstrual phase starts just as you would imagine. It is the first day of your bleeding. You would see some um, blood coming out of your vagina and that's how you know to start counting. During that time, your mighty, mighty mankind maker. So if we're looking at the diagram and we're looking at me, mm -hmm. we are, the ovaries are here. Ovary. This is the fallopian tube and this is the uterus, okay? So, during the menstrual phase we discussed, you would start to see, um, you know, bleeding through the vagina, right? So you've had that for seven days. During that time, the follicular phase is also going on. And the follicular phase um, is your ovaries kind of getting bigger, filling up with different little eggs, right? Your strongest and healthiest egg is what ovulates. And what is ovulation? Ovulation is your ovary turning around, boop, dropping the egg down the fallopian tube. Egg travels down. This is ovulation. So when we're talking about ovulation, we're saying the egg is being dropped in the fallopian tube and traveling down um, towards your uterus. 
conception happens in the fallopian tube. But we'll get into that more. I just want to talk about the normal cycle. Okay, so now we have ovulated. The egg came through the fallopian tube and is now sitting in your uterus. What's happening in your uterus? Your uterus is preparing for the egg. The lining is getting more plump, it's getting more lush, and it is preparing for a potential pregnancy or just the egg to come down. Now, in this case, the egg has not been fertilized. There has the, the egg has not been met with a sperm. So when we're talking about fertilization, we're saying the egg that has come down to the fallopian tube has met a sperm. In this case, it has not happened. The egg has come down to the uterus and it is making something called the corpus luteum. The corpus luteum is just an egg sitting there, kind of waiting, letting off a little estrogen, letting off a little progesterone, and then it's like, you know what? Nothing's happening here. Let me exit stage left, and that is when you get your period, okay? So we've talked about the normal cycle, right? Let's dig deeper into ovulation because as we discussed, ovulation is where pregnancy can occur. It is during ovulation. Now, if we're talking about a 28-day cycle, which most women have a 28-day cycle, if you do not have a 28-day cycle, it does not make you abnormal. It just means you are different from the average. So a normal cycle occurs between 21 days and 35 days. However, on average, 28 days is the cycle. So if 28 days is your cycle, day 14 is when ovulation typically happens. And we remember ovulation, the mighty ovary, drops down the egg and it's kind of coming down the tube. Now what's happening in your body during this time? You may not even know you're ovulating, but there are some telltale signs. If you tune into your body, some things happen. Sometimes women report just a little breast tenderness. It is not as extreme as the breast tenderness you may experience with your actual period, but you do notice a little breast tenderness. Additionally, when we talk about vaginal mucus, and this is a telltale sign and something that you should pay attention to if you wanna to get to know your body. The mucus, we are always excreting mucus from our vagina, sometimes more, sometimes less. One of the telltale signs for ovulation is your cervical mucus becomes more clear, more liquidy, and the consistency that I would describe it is egg white. When you start to see that egg whitey discharge, you know that you are um, approaching ovulation or are in the midst of ovulation actually happening. Why does this matter? If you take nothing from this video, just remember how you can predict ovulation. Ovulation is one of the only times that you can get pregnant, mm -hmm. right? So, Let's delve into ovulation and pregnancy a little more. So let me ask you a real quick question, mm -hmm. doctor. If a, so we've already discussed it, that we understand the average lady's period is about 28 days. And mm -hmm. you had said, if a lady is having her period every 30 days, is that considered abnormal or would she still be considered healthy during that time? Yeah, so a woman who has a um, menstrual cycle routinely every 30 days is completely in the window of normal. Okay. The only thing is the way that you count your cycle and count your ovulation. So I'll go into a couple of examples of um, ovulation variances or, or lengthening of periods. Okay. Um, of your menstrual cycle okay, and what that would mean. Okay, and then let me ask you another quick mm -hmm. question because you had said that a lady would be able to tell because her body gives off signs that she's ovulating. How would a lady be able to find the discharge? Would she wait for it until it's in her panties or would you suggest that maybe if she is curious, 
for her to maybe if she was to insert maybe a finger into her vagina to be able to get the discharge out, what would you suggest so that a lady can become more aware of what her body is releasing? That is an excellent question and it brings me to another point. Ladies, you should always have a mirror with you, you know, just take a peek at her. You know, is everything pink? Do you see any lumps? Is there any discharge that doesn't look normal? Are you spotting? So when we're talking about ovulation, it's actually something that you may notice in your underwear. You might even feel it, but yeah, there's nothing wrong with just taking a tissue, look and seeing, is there more um, discharge than normal? Is it white? Is it um, clear? Is it red tinged? You know, just really getting comfortable looking at your mighty mankind maker. Okay. Ladies, it's healthy to get your period. It's healthy to get your period, but it's even better when you are aware of what's going on in your body because no one else can tell you what's going on in your body except for yourself, right? So take it away, doctor. <laughs> tell us more about the wonderful world of ovulation. Okay, so I want to get back to the cycle and the deviating from the average woman's 28-day cycle. Okay. So if you're a person that gets your... Um, your period is on a 28-day cycle, you will likely ov ovulate on day 14. Your fertile days are day 12, 13, and 14. That's your most fertile days. We're going to go over um, your fertile days a little bit more clearly, but just hold on to that. But say you get your period on the longer side, you are a 35 day cycle, right? So your period starts on day one and you can count all the way to 35 before your next cycle begins. You likely ovulate on day 21 and your fertile days are 19, 20, and 21. How did you I figure that out? Because, thank you, ovulation generally happens 14 days before your period. Okay. So, um, and they have a lot of great ovulation trackers um, that you can, we'll provide the links down below, um, but there are some great ovulation trackers, free trackers online. You can put in your, your period dates, you can put in um, your calendar and it will spit out when you're ovulating, when you're likely to get your period. This is a great way to do um, some of your own natural contraception if you are not looking to get pregnant. Ladies, did you hear what she just said? Did you hear what the doctor said? If you are aware of what your cycle is, and there are many free apps that let you know, you can decide when you want to get pregnant. Gentlemen, the same. If you know your lady's ovulation cycle, you're going to know when and when not to be able to get pregnant. Continue, doctor. Okay, so we're gonna go over this um, a lot more in depth, right? Because it's very important that we all understand this. Ladies understand it so they can take their fertility and their menstrual cycle in their own hands and men can also understand um, when it is best to rest if you do not want to um, conceive. So, well, I was gonna say, this is a nice way for both parties to know when to duck and dive. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Duck and dive. If you gotta avoid that man, duck and dive, girls. And gentlemen, if you gotta duck and dive from her during this time, duck and dive. Exactly. Continue. So let's talk about our fertile window, right? When are we most fertile? Ovulation is the day the egg is released from the ovary. So you are highly fertile on that day and five days before. Why five days before? Because sperm lives for five days. So just because you do not have sex on the day of ov ovulation, there could be some sperm in the mist looking around trying to climb up that fallopian tube sperms while, are tricky right so for five days before ovulation you are um highly um susceptible to pregnancy but 
we talked about the three real danger days, but if you are using natural contraception, it's best to figure out your cycle, figure out your cervical mucus, and then time when you have sex. Doctor, you just said natural contraception. Can you tell the people what that exactly means, what it means by natural contraception? Natural contraception, um, your body is, is, is magical and it is um, really down to a science. So your body is always giving you clues about when is it most fertile? When are you most likely to conceive? Um, and if you follow these recommendations to a T, you are less likely to conceive. Now, artificial contraception has higher, um, higher rates of higher success rates, but that's only because most people really don't understand their menstrual cycle. They do not follow um, the guidelines. They are not testing their basal body temperature. They are not looking at their cervical mucus. They're not in tune with their bodies. But if you are in tune with your body, you can figure out one, two, three, like what, what's gonna happen and where do I need to ease back? So that is natural contraception. It is instead of taking any type of pill, any type of shot, um, inserting any device like an IUD, you are letting your body tell you, hey, this is the time that if we don't want to conceive, we do not have sex. So let's go over that one more time. Ovulation, boom, right? Ovary drops the egg, goes down the fallopian tube. When this is happening, ovulation, day 14, that is when you are highly fertile. And also five days before, because semen can live in the uterus for up to five days. So if you don't want that to happen, learn your menstrual cycle, learn when you ovulate, based on your days. You do, if you're not a 28 day person, just backtrack 14 days from when you get your period and that is when you likely will ovulate. So doctor, just so that the good people can understand us. So if we had a calendar and we had a 35 day cycle and you were used to getting your period on the 35th day, you would count backwards from 35 minus two weeks, which is 14 days. Right. So we would do 35 minus 14 right. to get the day when we are expecting to ovulate. Likely ovulate. Likely. Mm -hmm. So 35 minus 14 21. is 21, yep. right? So now on day 21 is now when we are expecting to ovulate. Exactly. However, because sperm can live in the uterus for up to five days, to be super mindful, we should be careful five days prior to day 21 to avoid any accidental pregnancy. Exactly. Fantastic. Exactly. Thank you, doctor. And if for some reason you are in a situation where it is difficult for you to um, govern when you have intercourse, the best days for you to limit yourself from getting pregnant is the day of ovulation and two days before. So that's three days that if you can really figure out a way to um, stay away from, you know, that person that- um, Stay away from sperm. <laughs> exactly. If you can stay away from sperm for those three days and really, you know, plan, maybe it's go to your mother's house. Maybe it's, you know, there, there are ways that you can come up with and empower yourself to take your contraception into your own hands. So ladies, let us learn how to take ovulation under control. The beauty of when women, when we know ourselves, we're empowering ourselves. We don't wait for somebody else to come do it for us. And it's up to us. I wanna thank the doctor for our lesson for today. 
Meet us up next time as we continue this series on menstruation, ovulation, and all of those things that affect only us women, but it's important for us to really understand what it is, that mighty man maker. Okay, see you guys next time. Thank you. Thank bye. you. Bye.